Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our fifth edition of Story Hunters. You don't, we found this blooming story by now, wouldn't you? All this hunting we're doing. Um, oh, and my light's just gone off. That's a great start. Um, thank you ever so much for joining me, everyone. Lovely to see you all. Hope you had snow this weekend. There we go. It's a bit light on the situation. And I hope that it's not too grey and dull and wet and horrible where you are this morning. It's certainly a bit like that here in Somerset. I'm watching the snow melt. Actually, the snow's all gone, to be honest. We didn't have that much. But uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a cold, grey old morning. So what better way to spend it than with you guys? So hope you're doing OK. Morning, everybody. All the hellos coming in. Uh, hey, Henbury, Silver Hill. Nice to see you. Hi, Izzy. Uh, very, very nice to see you all. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for joining me again. It's lovely to see you all. Shout out to Goring School. Hi, Goring School. Nice to see you. Books in the shade. Hello. Hi, Nina. Hi, my attic library. Hello. Oh, this is lovely, guys. Thank you so much. Lovely to see you all. I'm waving away very happily. Very, very good to see you. So I hope we've all got a cup of tea. Can't do without a cup of tea, can you? And what we are going to be talking about this morning is how you keep writing. Hello, book lover Joe. I'm going to be mentioning you in a minute, funnily enough. You must have must have read my mind. So things we do to keep us writing or to get us writing when we're not really feeling feeling the buzz, because that happens a lot when you're a writer. Um, I'll be honest, you, you have this romantic notion that being a writer is sitting over your fairy lights on and your Jack Russell at your feet and that, and drinking tea. And of course, that's the that's a really nice part of it. But sometimes it does. Uh, it does feel like quite hard work. And the other thing to remember is that, you know, when you're when you are like an author who who is published, it's actually your job as well. You know, if I didn't write books, then I, I wouldn't get paid. So there is also that element to it that it's not just the dream job. It actually is paid work as well. So um, <laughs> we have a lady who's on here this morning who's watching us, who's called Jo. And Jo is a school librarian. She's also an author. She's got a book coming out next year. And she posted on Twitter. She might not know this because I haven't told her this yet. But she posted on Twitter one of the something that helped her write the other day. And I saw it and I thought, oh, I'm going to have a go at that. And Joe, this was what you posted. Um, a little timer. Like this, look. That's what she posted. And so I thought, right, where did she get that from? Went on online and found it. And it does this horrible... All right, you can stop. Um, thing when you get to the end of where you are. Now, why that? Hi, Westerly class. Hi. Um, why that's a good idea is because if you've got your phone in front of you, which is what I normally do, if I'm timing myself to write for a certain amount of time, all the other things that a phone does, it's still doing. So it can be sat there on your desk and it goes out after a bit if you haven't touched it. Or it does um, all the other notifications come up. So you can see that your mum's trying to phone you or somebody's bid on something you're selling on eBay or somebody's liked a tweet or whatever. And that can be really distracting. Even if you turn your phone over, there's still, there's still the kind of, you know, temptation. So this little thing, which Joe was using um, and she was raving about, I thought, Joe, oh, I'm going to give that a go. And so I ordered one and it came really, really quickly. Um, in the post and you set it for um, a bit of time so that's set for five minutes and that blue section sort of disappears as the time you know ticks away so you actually get oh stop it so you say you get that um, that very visual way of knowing that you're using up time and you can turn your phone off and you can turn your internet off and all that sort of stuff, and you're still there working. So I used that yesterday for the first time, and I have to say I had a really good afternoon writing. So thank you, Joe, for that tip, because it really worked for me. So what we're going to do this morning, I'm going to crack the old whip this morning, and we're going to have um, a little go at writing under timed conditions, okay? Because this is a way of, like I say, getting your brain working really, really quickly, and just not taking your pen off the page because sometimes that in itself is the thing that kind of gets your brain into writing mode. So I've got my little notebook here. Look, this is our notebook with our ideas in it. And what I'm going to ask you to do 
this is our first task of the morning okay so our first task of the morning is actually a drawing exercise <laughs> love a bit of drawing um and just to just to literally get you used to that feeling of your pen moving about on the page and your brain getting used to the idea so i want you to draw three things three so three little just images it doesn't have to be you know great um art or anything just three images that represent you as a person that symbolize you as a person so three images that symbolize you as a person so it might be something that you like it might be something that you like doing it might be i don't know the number of your birthday or it might be a picture of a cake <laughs> it might be a cup of tea if it's me um it's it's really up to you but i'm gonna time well i'm gonna just very loosely give you about a minute or so to do that a couple, maybe a couple of minutes we've got card dog heart there <laughs> for us words right so draw okay because it's about the act of your pen moving across the page okay so i'm gonna be head down and doing that so i'm gonna should i set my little timer there it is that the old visualizer now i don't know if you can no you probably can't see that very well um, but i've set it and it's going i'll hold it up okay here we go right let's draw these three pictures and off you go go so our, our visualizer is tipping away I can hear it ticking as well, like a bomb waiting to go off with that horrible screech. So three pictures. Okay. Oh, I reckon we're on about 30 seconds now. Time for a little bit of colouring in. If you're feeling that way inclined. Okay, I'm going to stop us so we don't have to. There we go. Right, so three pictures. There's mine. See them? <laughs> Dog with a slightly strange ear. So you can, what we are drawing again, we're drawing three things that represent you as a person, three things that you like, three things that, you know, tell us a little bit about you. So you've got three pictures there, look, um, which should tell you about me. So one of them's a book. It is a book, honest. Like, you know, anyone can see that. And we've got, that's that's my dog that's my boxer dog um that i used to have and cup of tea okay so three things and all that did was just got you used to the idea of your pen moving about on the page okay right the next thing and that actually was a little task that when i used to do when i was doing my creative writing ma at bath university one of the tutors there a lady called julia green who's a brilliant writer herself that was one of the, her little exercises that she recommended just that idea of drawing something it gets your brain thinking in a creative way. It's a nice, gentle way in. Right, the next thing then is I want you to think about your character and your story. So we hopefully you've you've you know you've got a bit of an idea going on. Some of you might have a very big idea going on, but you've got a character who you've been thinking about in these sessions. And what I would like you to do now is draw three things that symbolise your character. OK, so three things that symbolise your character. So same thing again. So we'll go for a minute. All right. Um, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to turn it on. Yet. I'm frightened of that noise. It's it's horrible. So we do a book of badminton bat and my birthday. Oh, well, that sounds great. OK, so come on then. Characters. Now think of your character. Three things that symbolise them. And we're going to go for a minute or so. Go. Get drawing. Okay, so I, and this is a little bit harder because you probably don't know your character quite as well yet. And I'm also, because <laughs> I've just drawn something that looks like a fried egg and I don't think my character, maybe she does. Maybe that's something I'm going to have to write into the story now. Um, oh my word, I'm not even sure what that is. Well, I am, but it doesn't look anything like it. Oh, okay. Um... Um, 
Oh dear. <laughs> I just really realise why you're not an illustrator when you start trying to draw things. Goodness me. This the oh dear. I don't even know what it is really. Right, okay, I think that's enough <laughs> humiliation online. <laughs> okay, so here we go. These are my characters' pictures um, underneath. So one of them's like a fried egg with ears and two eyes. Um, that's meant to be um, a jaguar, by the way, as in the big cat. There's a letter in the middle because she's waiting to hear from somebody. And that thing on the end that looks like a caravan with a box on the back. So meant to be a train. Um, but hey that she's 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 gone on a journey by train um hey i i knew what it meant pizza dog um rugby pizza dog oh that sounds good i'm just having a look at your some of your um little ideas coming up here emma i came to see you hey did you izzy that's lovely oh i love hay festival it's fantastic hope to see you there again sometime uh what else have we got going on here anybody else got some want to tell us about their pictures they've been drawing um, no, we seem to have grown to a halt for a minute. OK, so a little bit of drawing there just to get us started. We've got a tree being drawn. That sounds quite interesting. I wonder what, what how that relates to your cat. Skirt, pizza and parcel. Mmm, nice. OK, good, good stuff. Flower, bunny and waves. We've got cake, karate and love. Wow. Writing family and the circus. Nice. Cat, boy, hens, lion, art outside. Now, these are just really intriguing already. Football, cat, glove, clothes, animals, kindness. Oh, OK. Alcohol because her dad is an alcoholic. That sounds quite a grim old story. Um, family, food and football, monsters, gaming, sleep, horse, robo and letter. Oh, she's seven and she's called Lavender. That's a lovely name. That is... <laughs> That is lovely. Well done, guys. Some really nice ideas. And I really like the idea that when you put those words together of those things, they sound really random. It kind of makes me think, OK, this, this feels like a kind of quite an authentic story rather than, you know, because people are random. People do like random things that you might not necessarily think about. OK, so we've got our pens on the page. That is a very good start. Right. Now, then, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to start writing. In fact, no, we're not going to start writing yet. I'm going to read to you. Because what we were doing last week was we were talking about your characters going on a journey. And one of the things that I was talking about was that my character needs to go on a journey. And I'll be brutally honest with you. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say already. I haven't got there yet. We, um, we, we haven't actually got anywhere near the journey yet. In fact, the person who's taking on the journey hasn't even turned up. But she's about to. I actually had a really, thanks to Joe's little clock, I actually had a really big breakthrough yesterday afternoon. And I, and I felt like I'd nailed what I'd written so far enough to now kind of take the next step in the story. So the word count hasn't gone up very much. The word count, I'm not even going to dare moving my computer this morning, but uh, my phone, but the, the word count hasn't gone up. Um, but it has, um, it has solidified, if you like. I've got rid of bits I don't need. It's, um, and it's kind of, you know, it's looking all right, actually. I'm kind of reasonably happy with what we've got so far. So that is, that's quite an admission for a writer. So, um, uh, so anyway, there we go. So remember what we were talking about last week? We were saying that if your character is going on a journey, that they need to kind of have obstacles along the way that kind of get in the way of them on that journey. So things don't go to plan, things um, go wrong, things go missing, da, 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 da. And before I start, just give you a little example of that. Um, I'm just going to show you three books that I've got here in front of me that are all about people going on journeys. Now, the first one um it's this is a proof copy now what happens with um books is before they're published you get like a kind of a proof copy which is before it goes to print it hasn't got the proper cover on it it's a very early sort of version of it before it's proofread that's what's called a proof copy so there might be a few mistakes in it um but it's an early read so you can all be going online and saying hey i read this brilliant book by ross montgomery called the midnight guardians um now, when I first read this book, I thought it was actually called The Midnight Cardigans, um, which it's not actually called. <laughs> As you can see, it's actually called The Midnight Cardigan. I can't even say it now. Anyway, the point being, this was a Waterstones book of the month. 
and it's absolutely brilliant and it's about some children who during the second world war who have to try and get to london across country and it's brilliant it's 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 got magic in it it's got war in it it's got um courageous children it's and, and they come across all sorts of problems one of them being the time they've got to get to london and the fact they're trying to get there on the back of a magical tiger who gets tired so that is a really good example of what we're talking about about this kind of trying to get somewhere in a you know and all these things get in the way um this is another one this one came in the post the other day um by um, mg leonard and sam sedgman and this is part of a uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. series. That's the word I was thinking of, series. Now, I haven't read this one yet, but I th I'm reckoning it's definitely about travel because it's adventures on trains and they're set on trains. And um, M.G. Leonard is absolutely fabulous. You know, she wrote the Beetle Boy books and she's she's a great author. So that is going to be really interesting as well. An example of people going somewhere and when they're on that journey, all sorts of things going on. And this one, this is another proof copy. Now, you can see this isn't a proper book cover because it hasn't got a massive title on it or anything. If it hasn't got the name of the author on it. But this is um, what's, this is a book called The Voyage of the Sparrowhawk by Natasha Farron. And it's just won the Costa Prize for, um, for children's books. And it's an absolute corker of a story. It's lovely, lovely, really nice, heartwarming, lovely story. Just the sort of thing we need right now. And it's about some children who decide that they're going to find they need to find um some people that they've lost contact with uh, that are very very important to them and so they decide to take a, a narrow boat like a kind of barge you know the sort of things you see on canals across the english channel now um everybody's <laughs> telling them that this is really not a very good idea at all and that you know barges have flat bottoms and the channel can be quite choppy and really not a good idea and as they're going across the channel they got dogs with them as well and it's all over but it's it's brilliant i loved this book so again that's another corker about what we're talking about right so moving on then from books so this book of mine which some of you may have heard of secrets of a sunking is also about some children who go on a journey sorry that one is called the voyage of the sparrow hawk voyage of the sparrow hawk by natasha farron um and it's fantastic it's a really good book so my story um Secrets of Sun King involves a journey and it's actually quite helpful sometimes to remind myself I've done this before, that I actually have written a book because, you know, you do get to a point in your writing where you think, um, oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, and my characters go on a journey across Europe on a train and they end up in Egypt. And when they get to Egypt, the journeying isn't over because they've got to find a particular place in which to deposit the object they brought with them so um so they um but when they get there it's not straight you know plain sailing either so i'm just going to read you a tiny little bit and then we're going to get writing again because i'm realizing this is we're over halfway through already oh okay so this is what happens when they arrive in the valley of the kings which is exactly where they want to be they've come all the way from london they're now in the valley of the kings um in egypt they are within a stone's throw away from um Tutankhamun's tomb um and yet and they can see Howard Carter and all his men and women down there excavating so they are absolutely there and then something happens once and they're going down the hill into the valley once we got going it wasn't too bad we were almost a quarter of a way down the hillside when I heard Oz calling out to me I turned around to see him pointing at the sky Something had happened to the sun. One moment it was low and red, and the next it had dimmed like it had gone behind a cloud. Only there were no clouds, just a huge, billowing wall of dust coming towards us at alarming speeds. Within seconds we were in the middle of a yellow fog. It wasn't like a London pea super, it was hot and gritty. It made my eyes sting and my mouth go powder dry. Now I really couldn't see anything but swirling, churning sand. We froze on the hillside. One wrong foot might send any one of us plummeting to the valley floor. Ugh, yikes, this is horrible, Tulip yelled. I was so glad to hear her voice. Even more glad when I felt an arm, then another arm, and Tulip wrapped herself tightly around me, burying her face between my shoulder blades. Oz, I cried, are you there? I didn't hear him reply. We'll have to sit it out, I said, praying that Oz was nearby too and being sensible. 
I'd read about sandstorms, but that didn't prepare me for being in the middle of one. The whole sky had gone thunderstorm dark. The wind picked up too, whipping round our heads, blowing sand everywhere. I clamped my hands over my mouth, shut my eyes. Behind me, Julep groaned. It's vile! Stop talking, I told her. I had no idea how close we were to the edge of the hillside. There was nothing to cling on to. Everywhere was sand. It was in the air, on the ground, in my ears, up my nose, crunching between my teeth. And even when I did open my eyes just a slither, I couldn't see any further than my hand. I had an eerie feeling that this sandstorm wasn't a coincidence. Perhaps they were common in this part, in these parts, but I didn't think so somehow. A sandstorm had happened on the day Kiki died. A young man caught out in bad weather had perished. OK, so she gets caught in a sandstorm. They don't get sandstorms over here that often, um, but it's one of those things that kind of stops them dead and also makes them, excuse the pun, and it makes them think about, oh my goodness, is this not just um, a thing that's having a natural phenom phenomenon, phenomenon, um, but it actually is, it means something. OK, right, let's get cracking then. So pens again, please. OK, we've got our pens. Now, what we're going to do this time is we're going to do some writing sprints rather than drawing. So we are going to think about um, your character is caught in a storm. OK, um, it can be any sort of storm you like. The word I want you to think about is storm. So your character is in a storm or you are experiencing a storm. It doesn't have to be your character. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody spelt phenomenon properly for me. That's very nice. Good. I can't draw. Me neither. So let's go for a minute. Now I am going to put our horrible little squeaky thing on here. So we are. So, you know, get your headphones on, get your ear protectors ready. Your character gets caught in a storm. You can choose what type of weather it is. Um, I had a sandstorm there, but you can have um, a tornado. You could have rain. You could have a blizzard or oh, a blizzard. It's really up to you, but it's really terrible weather that it caught in. OK, and what we're going to do could be in the ocean. if you're. Oh, shut up. Started yet. Um, what we're going to do at the end of our minute is we're going to count our words to see how many words we managed to write in a minute. Now, that is quite, quite challenging because it means that you're kind of trying to get as many possible words down is a moment okay in, in in the minute as you can okay right i'm setting my timer go many words as you can in a minute There we go. Right, that's our minute up. So count your words. One, two, three. How many eyes have you got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thir
you're good. 40, well done. 5, 84. Whoa, somebody's a super fast writer. Okay, right. So that gives you an idea of, you know, how many words you can write in a second, in a second, in a minute. And it's just got your pen moving again, hasn't it? And it's also, it doesn't matter if it's only, you know, a few. The fact is you've got more than you did when we started. So that's all good. Okay, right. We're going to go for two minutes now. This might actually be our final little stint. I'm just going to check the time. Oh, 25 past. Yeah, that is going to be our final little stint. Okay, so two minutes this time. Your character will lead us, leads us nicely on to the next session because on Thursday we're going to be talking about objects, how certain objects in stories can really kind of enhance what your character is experiencing. And some, some objects are really sort of enticing and can, can actually help your plot. So we are going to go for two minutes now and we are going to imagine that our character has found an object. So you can literally carry on from them in the storm. You know, that we can just go with the next sentence. They find something. They find an object that's very important. OK, now I'm going to set me little doodah again. Um, so just so you see. All right. So we've got two minutes this time. There we go. Um, and off you go and count your words at the end. So find an object. It's up to you what that object is. See that actually, I might hold it up there for you to see. There we go. Oh, yeah, I'm going to share that joy with you. The joy of that noise. Right, let's get rid of that notification up there. Right, Mia looked at me distraught. Jewel, she whispered, her hands dripping with sweat. What? Mia, we're nearly there. Please don't bail on me now. Mia shook her head and leaned into the... Oh, that sounds gripping. Um, I reached to grab it. A hand pulled me away. Oh, the lightsaber was still in the bag, dripping wet. I reached to grab it. A hand pulled me. That sounds really gripping, Silver Hill. Brilliant stuff. And we've got the swamp as well. Oh, wow. There's some really, really good bits in here. Well done, guys. I can't read them all. Um, tried to... Uh, tie shove it. So she squeezed her hand and it came out. Oh, gloves soaked in blood. Right, how many words did we get that time then? Let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45
um you know just with so few words it's absolutely fantastic well done wrote so much didn't even get to the part where she finds the item that's fantastic right it's half past 10 we're gonna have to stop whoa easy tiger okay well done i think our, our sessions seem to follow a little bit of a pattern don't they where we kind of it's like we kind of pick up speed and we're kind of by the end we're like on fire this is fantastic and really really exciting thank you so much um so really really well done so just to recap then what we've done this morning is we've talked about things you can do to get yourself writing when you feel a bit stuck so things that kind of just free up your imagination and free up your creativity so we did a little bit of drawing first we did a little bit of chatting we did a little bit of reading we talked about books we um what else did we do we talked about the timer the timer the beep 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 noise and then we did some writing some writing sprints where we timed ourselves and we counted the words up at the end so you rock you guys you rose to the challenge you were absolutely brilliant and thank you to you and to your teachers for being here today and taking part really really impressed with you you're just the best class ever and we'll be back on thursday to talk about objects because that's what our characters have found thank you so much guys you look after yourselves and we'll see you soon take care Happy writing. Bye-bye.